uh, my brief was to, to, to give an overview actually of, of, uh, of RDTs, from RDTs to whole genome sequencing, and I thought that was pretty tough. Um, but what I'm going to do is very rapidly, uh, so I've collapsed it down into uh, a subset of that, which is around uh, just RDTs. Um, I'm a genome scientist, for those who don't, uh, who don't know me, and I'm going to give it very much from a genome scientist perspective. Um, the aim of this, I guess, is to provoke discussion tomorrow at the, uh, the lab working group when we start talking more about how appropriate uh, uh, molecular tests are compared with uh, uh, the current um, uh, um, selection of, uh, of, uh, of um, uh, um, uh, RDTs. <laughs> So, okay, so um, in terms of identify, uh, identifying uh, cholera, we, we've heard this morning that the uh, gold standard is, is for culture, um, and most of the rapid diagnostic tests rely on phenotypic methods, so serotyping using ELISA-based, i.e. specific antibody-based technologies. So, as I say, forgive me if I'm going through very fast, but I'm going to try and crush this into five minutes, so please forgive me for that. Um, there are other uh, techniques uh, that have been used, phage typing, multilocus enzyme electrophoresis, and for those who, are, um, uh, who, who have read the literature over the years about um, cholera uh, molecular um, epidemiology, I've uh, have read multiple uh, papers with various different techniques, sometimes with different standards, uh, in, in terms of things like PFGE, the genotypic methods, with different uh, enzymes uh, digesting the DNA. But there's a whole host of, of phenotypic methods and genotypic methods that have been used for cholera. Wrong way. Um, and to cut a long story short, the, uh, uh, there's some, uh, we wrote um, uh, a, a technical note on the RDTs, and that's been mentioned this morning, so uh, I won't uh, labour the point too much, other than, so, uh, than to say that it actually talks uh, very much about the... Uh, um, the uh, antibody-based uh, approaches for RDTs and how um, specific and, uh, and sensitive they are. Um, it also shows they have a, 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 a lower than uh, optimal uh, positive predictive value. But there's a really nice technical note that we put together as part of the GTFCC, and there's some really nice publications now which have looked um, at uh, different RDTs in use in, in, in situ, if you like. So in terms of molecular techniques, uh, as I sort of alluded to, a huge, a huge array of them have been used to track cholera over time. Um, and, uh, um, and some of them are still used as, uh, as detection methods or targets um, for, under, for identifying uh, uh, cholera, uh, vibrio cholera. And, uh, and so I'm just going to uh, talk through some of those um, just in a, in a short bit of detail. Um, if you um, take some of the molecular techniques like MLVA, so multilocus uh, VNTR analysis, so it's a repeat-based uh, approach where you look at the expansion and contraction of different repeats within the genome as an indicator of how related uh, two different strains are, um, you can get really beautiful uh, trees. And this is a study that we uh, that we did in, uh, in Chandigarh in northern India, and you get a beautiful tree based on MLVA, and each of these colours represents, if you like, a, a, a cluster of MLVA types. Um, but if you then uh, put this against uh, whole genome sequencing, and this is a, a whole genome-based phylogenetic tree here, where the different nodes uh, 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 that are more closely related to each other uh, occur on the same branches and so on. And if you then look just for one example, if you look here, you can see the MLVA types uh, that were drawn and coloured in on this tree are distributed right across the phylogeny um, with, uh, um, for example, this dark blue cluster here being spread literally across all the isolates um, in the phylogenetic tree. And then you can see the resolution of using other uh, subgenomic regions like CTXB and so on, and even MLST for resolving these trees. There's limited resolution for looking at pandemic cholera um, uh, uh, by using subgenomic uh, molecular tests. However, there are a large number of, uh, uh, of RDTs um, which are PCR-based. Tomorrow, the discussion, I think that probably the, the most important discussion is whether they're at all appropriate and for what setting and by who. 
Um, but for now, uh, uh, as an overview, I'm just going to, uh, to talk about, just very briefly, the types of targets. So everything from 16S to um, more bespoke um, molecular targets are being used to track cholera, but almost all of these are in an academic setting. So Wazawan was a genomic island that's actually peculiar to Wave 1 strains that entered uh, Latin America in the early 90s, and actually turns out to be a very good um, uh, uh, target for looking at strains which are still circul were still circulating in Latin America. Um, there are very few um, uh, uh, marketed uh, uh, molecular tools, uh, molecular tests for, for, for cholera specifically. Here's an example, and later in the session we have a, a speaker who's going to talk about LAMP PCR, so I won't go into too much detail. Um, but there are uh, uh, two kits here from Norgen. One of them uh, involves the cyber green, the incorporation of dye into double-stranded DNA, and the other one is to do a TACMAN PCR. Okay, I have to wrap up. And uh, one thing that's really interesting is that there's also a company um, called Plasmid Design, which has actually developed a, a real-time PCR machine that can run off a, a battery. Um, uh, the trouble with this is uh, I've used it. Actually, the technology is fantastic, but the accuracy of the test is extremely poor. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, um, but, it's, but it's all hidden in the detail of the, uh, of the kit. One of them is meant to be cholera-specific, and one is uh, 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 meant to be um, pandemic-specific, pandemic cholera-specific, but actually it turns out to be simply CTXB, a probe for CTXB. And the other one is uh, OMPW, which is a, a species-specific target, but the actual machine is really great. Uh, again, to cut a long story short, in the interest of time, um, none of these molecular tools have passed uh, our TPP, and uh, I don't think, uh, and Laura, I don't know if she's, yeah, I don't think any of them have progressed or anyone has volunteered a molecular test for, uh, for certification. And one of the biggest uh, uh, problems, I guess, is that uh, um, most of these techniques, including the uh, um, including the uh, antibody-based RDTs target regions which are mobile in some sense. Um, CTXB is on a phage, and even the actual O1 operon is actually exchanged and present across the species. And so there are risks with any of these uh, RDTs, um, depending on the, I think, really on the level of incidence. Um, there are risks and how, rely how reliant you are on the, on, on the result. In a high incidence region, then, uh, then uh, uh, using a test that predicts O1 or O139 is, uh, is, 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 is a good predictor that it's a pandemic lineage. But in low incidence and perhaps between outbreaks, you might want much higher resolution. So these are the sort of uh, um, uh, um, roles that RDTs are thought to be uh, very good for, early outbreak with multiple testing, and sometimes with APW enrichment if it's an immune assay, um, right the way through to where WGS is probably more appropriate. And again, we have a, um, a talk later in the session on, on minion, so it'd be interesting to see how that the, the minion has worked in field. It's not just these that actually are appropriate for in field. Um, but these are the sort of questions that, uh, that, that WGS is probably much more uh, appropriate for answering than the, the RDT, than, than the current RDTs, including the molecular RDTs. So I think I'll leave it there.